Hello and welcome to Script Tonight React. I'm Script Tonight. Today we're going to be watching season one, episode seven of The Haunting of Bly Manor. Before I even get into this, I've seen the episode title is called The Two Faces Part Two, uh, which negates the vast majority of any introduction that I would have given because basically I, I need to understand what's happening with Peter and Rebecca. Uh, it looks like they kind of manufactured that circumstance at the end of the last episode. I genuinely thought in the moment that Danny was dead. I now don't. I, th I think I'm hoping she's just been knocked out. But I'm also conscious that I have sweet summer child tendencies. So we'll see. But my hope is that she's not dead. But even if she's not dead, I don't think anything is good is likely to come out of this scenario. So, uh, yeah, I'm I'm worried. I'm really, really worried about Danny. I'm still quite unbelievably pissed at Peter. And I really don't know how to feel about Rebecca because I don't know to what degree she's been complicit in this. But I did really don't like that she is using Flora in the way that she's using her. Like that absolutely has happened because um, Flora keeps getting tucked away and, and not knowing what's going on and being really confused and disoriented, which is deeply unpleasant for her. And that's happening because I believe Rebecca is taking over her body at certain points. Um, I think that's fairly well substantiated given the sort of poppy taps that she was giving her on the forehead were aligning with her being trapped in, tucked away in a memory. And yeah, like I didn't get malice from her in the conversation with Flora at the end, but I did get that she was kind of trying to mollify her and placate her without actually giving any sort of explanation as to what was going on so that Flora was still left confused and angry and, and I think to some degree violated. So not happy, but let's see where this episode takes us because what I am happy with is how phenomenal the storytelling of this series has been and continues to be. So without further ado, let's have at it. What game? Oh, shit. You're a friend. Who are you talking to? She's worried. She can't even hear you. I think you'd feel better if you told her this yourselves. Yeah. Show yourselves. <laughs> Fuck you. What's the matter, Miles? This feels wrong. Sometimes right can seem wrong when wrong can seem right. But that's the difference between children and adults. Seeing the big picture. Can you just tuck her away somewhere nice till she feels a little bit better? What are you doing about this, Rebecca? If you could pick anything, the best thing you can remember. It's not quite that simple, Flora. It's not quite the same. It's, it, what? Um, was that Hannah? Bex. Bex, you're slapping. It was Bex. Bex! Ah, it's okay. She's dream hopping. Okay, so like, um, so like Hannah got dragged off into her. That can happen. Okay. We need to find a way to help her, but also maybe make it so that she could dream hop too. When you want that far, hard to learn. Is he talking about killing her? Fuck off. I don't like it much when it happens unexpectedly, but the other times, it's perfectly splendid. That's Hannah. Okay. At the door. I don't stop. hear any, any knocking, I mean. So who's knocking? Because I can hear it. Tell. Oh, shit. Shit. 
No. That's what you say to me. All this time. That's what you see. His mum? Oh, yes! She must be an absolute piece of shit to have helped create this prick. I'm out. Of what? Money? And where do I go if not your father? Oh, fuck you. Manipulative he bitch. He sent you, didn't he? Yeah, probably. You know he'd kill you if he could. Fuck off. For what you did to him. For what I did to him. He says it all the time. I mean, where do I go? To your boss? You're shaking me down. Lord Henry Wingrave, I presume. What a bitch. Priceless heirlooms, they're not missing, they're Sorry. stolen. Pauls, I just got a... I'm so glad we're getting a glimpse into what created Peter Quint. Um, I don't know if we're going to see his dad at some point, but his mum is clearly... <clears throat> this, is, this is very authentically written because... Um, kind of a, a abuse in childhood can, can kind of send you one of two ways um, and one way you go is you become codependent which is what looks like the mum is so you tend to find yourself attracted to narcissists and abusive people and because you the Codependency has got a better name, um, which is called self-love deficit disorder, which is where you you have such little self-esteem that you see abuse as love, because that's what you've been taught. You don't think you're worth any more than that. So you end up, um, you can end up enabling really awful behaviour in that partner because you're scared of of being abandoned um so often you know the codependent parent might not be the um parent that's conducting the abuse but they will be almost kind of trap uh, trapping the child who's being abused into their world of this is all we deserve this is all we can you know rather than um, building the child's self-esteem and showing the child that a loving parent doesn't do this to a, to, a, to a child. So very interesting there to get that dynamic with the mother and Peter. Um, and the, sorry, the, the other way that you can go outside of becoming codependent is that you become a narcissist yourself. Um, and that's where you've worn this mask that's kept you alive and it's actually then the real you just rots away and there ends up being Peter Quint which is just solely manipulative um, it, other people don't exist in terms of genuine relationships love commitment those those sorts of things are not a part of a, of a narcissist's makeup anymore the the sort of the humanity in them has been destroyed and all that's left is this mask that they pretend to the world. But the mask is very good. Um, especially if it's not a grandiose narcissist. If you're talking about a communal narcissist or a covert narcissist, they're not like a Donald Trump. They're not someone you look you would look at and say that's a narcissist. They're someone you'd look at and be inspired by. You'd go, oh wow, that person's, you know, really great. Unless you manage to injure them somehow. And then woe betide you. Um because they will, they're like heat-seeking missiles. They'll do everything to destroy you, which is kind of how Peter is with um, Hannah. Where, because Hannah just sees him for what he is and is completely uninfected by his mask. She doesn't find him charming. She doesn't find him funny. She doesn't buy his vulnerability when he attempts to use that with her. And so literally he, he had to destroy her because she saw him. And he finds himself so detestable. That's why he wears the mask in the first place. Um, but yeah, so like every narcissist is basically a, a hurt child. And it's I have enormous empathy for the child. For that child that went through such abuse and trauma that they felt they had no choice than to essentially kind of kill themselves. You know, end 
their softness, their vulnerability, their trust, that all of that just to kill it and become a narcissist. But at the same time, because of the journey I've been on, I have a lot more respect for codependents who then go through the journey of recovery to restore actually their original self, the self that would have been there were they not um, abused. Because actually, I think that's the more courageous path to, to stay, to let parts of you remain vulnerable and come back, um, I think is really important. So sorry for the long explanation in the, in the middle of the scene, but I do think this is, I don't think you're gonna appreciate just how incredible this story is written unless you f- appreciate the story that they're telling um, and how real, how very real these scenarios are, even though it's in a horror setting. Absolutely brilliant. Play. My apologies. Oh, this is after Peter left. He just said to pack a bag. Pack a bag? Yes. That we were going to America together. Mm, sounds lovely. Why don't he tell his girlfriend he had the money? If he gave a damn about her. No, he if wouldn't. If he loved her, I would think he would tell her more than that. He wouldn't. Maybe just... not, since he did leave you behind, after all. No, he wouldn't run away! <laughs> Shit. But he's still here. So it's actually all right. He told me to tell you not to worry. So don't worry. He's still here. Oh, Miles. Miles! Fuck's sake, these transitions. A mixer. I'm starving. Mm, can't mess genius, Jamie. Is it a mixer? We'll damage the gluten molecules and we mustn't. <laughs> God help us all if those gluten molecules aren't dippity top. <laughs> One of Erin's cooking physics classes again. Oh, yeah, it's a fine lecture. It's chemistry. Mm. Certainly is. What's that? <laughs> ah, Rebecca, love. It really is. Then she's gonna be. Well, why don't you stay, sit with us, and have a brew? The kettle's still warm. Uh, kids can handle 50 minutes by themselves. Um, I'm not thirsty, thanks. I think I'm going to get some air. Feels quite warm today, doesn't it? God damn it, he's done such a number on her. And again, her codependent, she's clearly suffered at the hands of her father, hollow inside, not got self-esteem. And so pricks like Peter Quint can just come in and fuck her up. Pisses me off. That was the hair clip, wasn't it? Does not look warm out there at all. Looks freezing. Fuck that lake all the way. Hello, Jamie. I love her. Love her. Here to gloat a little, Jamie. Tell me you were right about him. Can you hate yourself doesn't mean everybody else does. Need to talk about him at all. Someone should point out that this is a moment. Yes! For you. Go and speak to our phantom boss. Tell me what that pupillage talked about. All this drama. To whatever goal it was you had before you even knew what a Peter Quint was. Well, that's that. And if there is anything at all that I can do to help, I'd be happy to do so. Thank you. See, that's what healthy, loving people are like. They don't need you to fucking complete them. They're complete, they're, they're just trying to help you. There's no fucking receipt. Oh, I wish she'd done that. She had so much ahead of her. Rex. Oh, fuck you. You said you were coming back. You said to pack a bag. They're gonna hear you, please. Good. They should hear me. They should call the police because you stole. No, I just... You stole from them. Shit. My God. You never told no, me the I truth. I never left you. I was here. Please, think. What's the one thing, the only thing, that would ever keep me from you? A better source of supply, you narcissistic piece of shit. (sighs) Or death. (sighs) Can we be excused, Miss Jessel? Miss Jessel? That vibrant, smart, 
ambitious person has just been gutted 